Hey guys, everything Apple Pro here, and Apple has just released iOS 8 Beta 4. So in this video, I'm going to cover with you what's changed, or at least what's visible, because under the surface, Apple has done a lot. They've fixed so many little issues with the previous iOS 8 betas, but there is a lot you can see as well. So first off, how do you install it? Well, for one, if you guys already are running a beta version, just go into general, software update. And in here, you'll see the latest beta. Just go ahead and download and select install now. If you guys are not a developer, you can go ahead and go on your computer, torrent it, and just select update in iTunes and select the firmware. And that's as simple as that. Anyways, you know, it should take about 10 to 15 minutes. And once I'm done installing it, I'll go ahead and cover everything that's new with you guys. Now, while this is installing, I just wanted to mention Apple actually released the iOS 8 beta 4 firmware a little earlier than people expected. It was predicted it was going to be out on the 28th, but you know, it is a little sooner. And the final release, it should be after the fifth or sixth beta, we'll be seeing a GM, the gold master version. And then the final will release, you know, with announcement of the next generation iPhone. And I'm really excited because right now there is going to be so much happening with Apple. There's iOS 8 with all of its new features. There's the iPhone 6, possibly two models. So, you know, it's a good time to be an Apple enthusiast. There's so much going on. Anyways, once this is done installing, I'll be right back. All right. And now that I've updated, let's go ahead and run through all of the changes in iOS 8 beta 4. There's now a new default stock application called Tips. So this is handy for anyone that's new to iPhone coming from Android or new to phones overall. You know, it gives you a little overview of how to use your phone, iPad, iPod Touch, just basic little tips. And I find it useful. However, it should be able to be removable, but it's not, you know, for people like me that are experienced, we don't really need this. However, you know, it is there, so it could be useful for beginners. Now, if we take a look at the control center in this latest beta, you'll see that it looks completely different. And if I just bring you iOS 7s right here, you can see that they remove the lines and it looks a little smoother. So it looks cool. It works well with the flat icon design and I don't have any complaints for it. It looks great. In settings, you now have an option for display and brightness. So it's separate from other options. And in here you can adjust text size, bold text, and brightness, auto brightness, all that. So it's just a new option for adjusting your display in settings. If you look around on the springboard, that bug reporter that was available in the previous versions of iOS 8 is no longer there. And from that, we can infer that, you know, it is getting more stable. Safari definitely feels a lot snappier, like it's more responsive, loads websites a little bit better. It's definitely getting better. iOS 8 is usable at this point. However, I still wouldn't recommend it, you know, wait until the public release. Also in settings, in general, there's actually a tab for handoff and suggested apps. So you remember that cool feature where you take your iPhone, bring it next to your computer and you get that little icon to trade everything that you're doing on the device and you know trade with it on the computer so you can work on it there. Well, there's now settings for it. So that's great. We can see that we're definitely making progress for handoff. In privacy, you'll see that HomeKit now has its own separate section. The Emoji keyboard has been slightly tweaked for a slightly different look. Spotlight now uses Bing as its main search engine, and I'm not okay with that, but I'm more than sure you can change that in settings. And in the Spotlight search menu, you can actually remove Spotlight suggestions now and the Bing web results. The multitasking menu has been slowed down a bit, so if you actually double click it, you'll notice that it's a little slower than before, just a little delay you know, more for optimization. In mail, you now have swipe options. So if you go in here, you can decide what swiping left or swiping right on your inbox will do. You can either flag it, choose to delete, mark as red, everything like that. In the contact settings, you can now choose what you want displayed in the app switcher, you know, the recents up here, whether you want your recent or phone favorites to be displayed. I can't show you because I don't have anything connected, but there are new options for managing Bluetooth devices in the Bluetooth menu in settings. In the photo editing options, you now have new options. So if you want to edit them, you can see it looks a little bit differently. And in here, if you just select something, you just slide up and down, switch things manually like that. Anyways, so it's just been tweaked a little bit in the photo editing. And the smallest one, of course, is this little book icon right there in Safari for the bookmarks. It looks a little bit different. So anyways, guys, there is a lot of little things and a lot yet to be discovered in this new beta firmware. This is just a rough overview so far because it just came out. Anyways, iOS 8 beta 4, plenty of new stuff. It's a very big update, much more stable. So I'm really excited for the final product. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Peace.